recherche fondamentale et recherche appliquée sont des leviers indispensables pour réussir ce troisième chantier. Mes chers amis, sans la notion de justice climatique, il n'y aurait pas eu d'accord de Paris, il n'y aurait pas eu de mobilisation véritable et nous ne serions pas là aujourd'hui. Chacun se serait renvoyé la faute et nous aurions continué à aller collectivement dans le mur. Cette justice climatique, la volonté de défendre un bien commun essentiel qu'est notre planète, notre climat, c'est notre capacité collective à dépasser tous les clivages géographiques, d'intérêts de court terme, de représentation. Aujourd'hui, nous inventons une nouvelle voie pour faire alliance dans le monde, non plus autour de principes, mais autour de biens communs, à travers un vrai changement de logiciel et une volonté de faire. Je vois ici des chefs d'État et de gouvernement, mais aussi de nombreuses institutions internationales, des entreprises, des investisseurs, des représentants de la société civile, tous réunis autour de cette initiative importante. Je reconnais nombre des visages qui étaient présents à Paris le 12 décembre dernier au One Planet Summit. Nous avons beaucoup avancé, mais il nous reste encore beaucoup à faire. Avec Monsieur le Premier ministre, nous souhaitons que tous ceux qui vont s'exprimer ce matin puissent ainsi faire des annonces concrètes sur leur plan pour développer l'énergie solaire dans leur pays, sur les solutions qu'ils peuvent proposer ou encore sur les investissements qu'ils s'engagent à réaliser. Et je veux ici vous dire, avec le Premier ministre Modi, We are deeply committed and we have the same obsession. Creating momentum, inspiring people and gathering them in order to deliver, but we are obsessed by concrete results. So now, all together, we are creating a new momentum. And this day is very important. But all together, we take a new commitment, which is just to deliver to get concrete results for our countries and for our planet. Et donc, mettons-nous au travail. Je vous remercie. Thank you, Honorable President of France, for your inspirational address. Merci beaucoup. May we now request the force behind the International Solar Alliance, the architect of a new resurgent green India. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, join us in welcoming Honorable Prime Minister of Republic of India, Sri Narendra Modi, to please deliver his inaugural address to the plenary. Mahamahim Rashtrapati. मैक्रो महामहिम राष्ट्रपतिगण व प्रधानमंत्रीगण सम्मान्य अतिथिगण देवी और सज्जनों नमस्कार मैं दिल्ली में इंटरनेशनल सोलार अलायंस के स्थापना सम्मेलन में आप सबका हार्दिक स्वागत करता हूं आज के ऐतिहासिक दिन का बीच नवंबर 2015 में पेरिस में 21वीं कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑफ पार्टीज के समय बोया गया था आज उस बीच से हरे भरे अंकुर निकल आए हैं इस नन्हे पौधों की नई संभावनाओं में फ्रांस ने बहुमूल्य भूमिका निभाई है इंटरनेशनल सोलर अलायंस का यह नन्ना पौधा आप सभी के सम्मिलित प्रयास और प्रतिबद्धता के बिना रोपा नहीं जा सकता था और इसलिए मैं फ्रांस का और आप सबका बहुत बहुत आभारी हूं 121 संभावित देशों में से 61 वन अलायंस को ज्वाइन कर चुके हैं 32 ने 
फ्रेमवर्क एग्रीमेंट को रेटिफाई भी कर दिया है लेकिन इस गठबंधन में हम सभी सहयोगी देशों के अलावा हमारे सबसे बड़े साथी हैं सूर्य देवता जो बाहर के वातावरण को प्रकाश और हमारे संकल्प को शक्ति दे रहे हैं फ्रेंड्स पृथ्वी पर जब जीवन ने अपनी आंखें खोली थी उसके भी करोड़ों साल पहले से सूरज लोक को प्रकाशित और अनुप्राणित करता आ रहा है जापान से लेकर पेरू तक ग्रीस हो या रोम इजिप्त इनका और पूर्व माया परंपरा हर सभ्यता ने सूरज को प्रतिष्ठा और महत्व दिया है लेकिन भारतीय दर्शन में हजारों साल पहले से सूर्य को जो केंद्रीय स्थान दिया गया वह अद्वितीय है भारत में वेदों ने हजारों साल पहले से सूर्य को विश्व की आत्मा माना है भारत में सूर्य को पूरे जीवन का पोषक माना गया है आज जब हम क्लाइमेट चेंज जैसे चुनौती से निपटने का रास्ता ढूंढ रहे हैं तो हमें प्राचीन दर्शन के संतुलन और समग्र दृष्टिकोण की ओर देखना ही होगा फ्रेंड्स हमारा हरित भविष्य इस बात पर निर्भर करता है कि हम साथ मिलकर क्या कर सकते हैं मुझे महात्मा गांधी के शब्द याद आते हैं द डिफरेंस बिटवीन वॉट वी डू एंड वॉट वी आर कैपेबल ऑफ डूइंग वुड सफाइस टू सॉल्व मोस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड प्रॉब्लम्स पूरे विश्व से नेताओं की आज यहां उपस्थिति इस बात की अभिव्यक्ति है कि सोलार एनर्जी मानव जाति की ऊर्जा जरूरतों को स्थायी रूप से पूरा करने का एक प्रभावी तथा किफायती समाधान उपलब्ध कराती है फ्रेंड्स भारत में हमने दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा नवीकरणीय ऊर्जा विस्तार कार्यक्रम शुरू किया है हम 2022 तक रिन्यूएबल से 175 गीगावाट बिजली उत्पन्न करेंगे जिसमें से 100 गीगावाट बिजली सौर ऊर्जा से होगी हमने इसमें से 20 गीगावाट इंस्टॉल सोलर पावर का लक्ष्य ऑलरेडी हासिल कर लिया है भारत में ऊर्जा की बढ़ोतरी अब परंपरागत ऊर्जा स्रोतों के बजाय रिन्यूएबल से अधिक हो रही है भारत में अटल ज्योति योजना का उद्देश्य अब पर्याप्त बिजली वाले क्षेत्रों में सोलर एनर्जी आधारित स्ट्रीट लाइट्स को इंस्टॉल करना है स्कूल जाने वाले बच्चों के लिए सोलर स्टडी लैंप स्कीम से सेवन मिलियन बच्चों को रोशनी मिल रही है अगर हम सोलर एनर्जी से दूसरी टेक्नोलॉजीज को जोड़ दें तो परिणाम और भी अच्छे हो जाते हैं उदाहरण के लिए सरकार द्वारा 28 करोड़ एलईडी बल्बों के वितरण से पिछले तीन साल में न सिर्फ 2 बिलियन डॉलर से अधिक की बचत हुई है बल्कि 4 गीगावाट बिजली भी बची है यही नहीं 30 मिलियन टन कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड भी कम बनी फ्रेंड्स हम सिर्फ 
भारत में ही नहीं विश्व में भी सोलार क्रांति चाहते हैं आप भारत में प्रशिक्षित सोलार मामा जिनका अभी आपने गीत भी सुना उनके भाषण भी सुने उनका वीडियो भी देखा अब आप भली भांति इन सोलार मामा से परिचित हो ही चुके हैं उनकी कहानी अपने आप में प्रेरणादायक है हमें खुशी है कि आई एस ए कॉर्पर्स फंड में योगदान के अलावा आई एस ए सेक्रेटरी की स्थापना के लिए 62 मिलियन अमेरिकी डॉलर का योगदान दिया है मुझे यह घोषणा करते हुए भी खुशी हो रही है कि हम आई एस ए सदस्यों के प्रत्येक वर्ष सौर ऊर्जा में 500 ट्रेडिंग स्लॉट्स प्रदान करेंगे हमने पूरे विश्व में 143 मिलियन अमेरिकी डॉलर के 13 सौर प्रोजेक्ट्स या तो पूरे कर लिए हैं या उनका क्रियान्वयन किया जा रहा है भारत 15 अन्य विकासशील देशों में 1.4 बिलियन अमेरिकी डॉलर की सहायता 27 और प्रोजेक्ट्स के लिए देने वाला है हमने प्रोजेक्ट्स प्रिपरेशन फैसिलिटी की स्थापना की है जो बैंकेबल प्रोजेक्ट्स डिजाइन करने के लिए पार्टनर देशों को कंसल्टेंसी सपोर्ट देगी मुझे आज यह घोषणा करते हुए भी खुशी हो रही है कि भारत सोलार टेक्नोलॉजी के गैप को भरने के लिए सोलार टेक्नोलॉजी मिशन भी शुरू करेगा इस मिशन का अंतर्राष्ट्रीय फोकस होगा और यह हमारी सारी सरकारी तकनीकी तथा शैक्षणिक संस्थाओं को साथ मिलाकर सोलार क्षेत्र में आर एंड डी प्रयासों का नेतृत्व करेगा फ्रेंड्स प्रचुर मात्रा में हवा की तरह उपलब्ध सोलार एनर्जी का विकास और प्रयोग हमारी समृद्धि के अलावा पृथ्वी का कार्बन भार अवश्य कम करेगा फ्रेंड्स हमें कुछ बिंदुओं पर ध्यान रखना होगा और वे हैं एक और बहुत से देश हैं जिसमें सूरज साल भर चमकता है परंतु संसाधनों और टेक्नोलॉजी का अभाव सौर ऊर्जा के इस्तेमाल में आड़े आता है रुकावट बनता है दूसरी ओर ऐसे द्वीप समूह और देश हैं जिनके अस्तित्व को क्लाइमेट चेंज के प्रभाव का सीधा सीधा खतरा है तीसरी बात यह है कि सोलार एनर्जी प्रकाश के लिए ही नहीं बल्कि अन्य बहुत से प्रयोगों यातायात क्लीन कुकिंग कृषि सोलार पंप हेल्थ केयर में भी उतनी ही उपयोगी हो सकती है सोलार एनर्जी के प्रयोग को बढ़ावा देने के लिए टेक्नोलॉजी की उपलब्धता और विकास आर्थिक संसाधन कीमतों में कमी स्टोरेज टेक्नोलॉजी का विकास मास मैन्युफैक्चरिंग और इनोवेशन के लिए पूरा इकोसिस्टम बहुत आवश्यक है फ्रेंड्स आगे का रास्ता क्या है यह हम सबको सोचना है मेरे मन में टेन एक्शन पॉइंट्स है जो मैं आज आप सबसे साझा करना चाहता हूं सर्वप्रथम है हमें यह सुनिश्चित करना होगा कि बेहतर और सस्ती सोलार टेक्नोलॉजी सबके लिए सुगम और सुलभ हो हमें हमारे एनर्जी मिक्स में सोलार का अनुपात बढ़ाना होगा हमें इनोवेशन को प्रोत्साहित करना होगा 
ताकि विभिन्न आवश्यकताओं के लिए सौर समाधान प्रदान हो सके हमें सोलार प्रोजेक्ट्स के लिए कंसेंसनल फाइनेंसिंग और कम जोखिम का वित्त मुहैया कराना होगा रेगुलेटरी एस्पेक्ट्स एवं मानकों का विकास करना होगा जो सौर समाधान अपनाने और उनके विकास को एक नई गति दे विकासशील देशों में बैंकेबल सोलर प्रोजेक्ट के लिए कंसल्टेंसी सपोर्ट का विकास जरूरी होगा हमारे प्रयासों में अधिक समावेशिता और भागीदारी पर बल दिया जाए हमें सेंटर्स फॉर ऑफ एक्सलेंसीज का एक व्यापक नेटवर्क बनाना चाहिए जो स्थानीय परिस्थितियों और कारकों को ध्यान में रख सके हमारी सोलर एनर्जी पॉलिसी को विकास की समग्रता से देखें ताकि एस की प्राप्ति में इससे ज्यादा में ज्यादा योगदान मिले हमें आईएसए सेक्रेटरिएट को मजबूत और प्रोफेशनल बनाना चाहिए फ्रेंड्स मुझे विश्वास है कि हम आईएसए के जरिए इन सभी एक्शन पॉइंट्स पर गतिशील विकास कर आगे बढ़ पाएंगे फ्रेंड्स आज का यह पल हमारी यात्रा की शुरुआत मात्र है हमारी यह अलायंस हमारे जीवन को सूरज के प्रकाश से और भी भर सकती है यह लेटेस्ट मेक द सन ब्राइटर को भी सार्थक कर सकती है हमेशा से भारतीय दर्शन की आत्मा वसुधैव कुटुम्बकम यानी द होल वर्ल्ड इज फैमिली यदि हम पूरी पृथ्वी पूरी मानवता की भलाई चाहते हैं तो मुझे विश्वास है कि निजी दायरों से बाहर निकलकर एक परिवार की तरह हम उद्देश्यों और प्रयासों में एकता और एकजुटता ला सकेंगे फ्रेंड्स यह वही रास्ता है जिससे हम प्राचीन मुनियों की प्रार्थना तमसो मां ज्योतिर्गमाय यानी हम अंधकार से प्रकाश को जा चले को चरितार्थ कर पाएंगे बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू थैंक यू ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया फॉर योर वाइब्रेंट एड्रेस हार्दिक धन्यवाद मे वी नाउ रिक्वेस्ट all the esteemed dignitaries on stage to rise up for the symbolic launch of the international solar alliance and place their hands on the sunny globe in front of them and press it for the launch of the international solar alliance i once again request esteemed dignitaries on stage to rise up for the symbolic launch of the international
Thank you, Excellencies and esteemed dignitaries. We now proceed into the plenary session. May we now request His Excellency, Mr. Paul Kagame, President of Rwanda and Chairman of the African Union, to kindly address the plenary. Excellency Narendra Modi, Prime Minister of the Republic of India, our gracious host, Excellency Emmanuel Macron, President of the Republic of France, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Heads of Delegation, representatives of international organizations, business leaders, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to begin by thanking Prime Minister Modi for convening this founding conference and for the outstanding hospitality we have enjoyed since our arrival. I also commend Francis leadership and India's on solar energy ever since the International Solar Alliance was proposed at the Paris climate more than two years ago. This includes the commitment of significant financial resources and credits from which Africa in particular stands to benefit. The sunniest countries on earth should not lack for energy. The fact that they do is an unacceptable irony. It is therefore fitting that more than half of countries that have signed and ratified the International Solar Alliance Treaty are African. Solar power is part of the answer to climate change. But to speed up adoption and get the environmental benefits, solar energy has to be at least as reliable and affordable as other energy sources. We are not just protecting the environment, we are protecting people and their well-being. To meet the sustainable development goals and the African Union's Agenda 2063 targets tremendous expansion in energy production is required in almost every African country. That is why the International Solar Alliance's twin mission of facilitating technology transfer and innovative financing is so timely. Advances in solar energy production must be matched by the development of batteries capable of storing it and smart grids to contribute it to customers, to distribute it to customers. In Rwanda, an eight and a half megawatt solar power plant in Rwamagana has already been, has already helped to stabilize daytime power supply in Eastern province. The facility has also demonstrated that we can do much more. The one trillion dollars needed for solar investment globally in the coming years will obviously not come from governments alone. Public private partnership is required. 
The International Solar Alliance has proposed tools to mitigate credit risk, send an important signal to the market that solar energy is a viable business. Solar power will not address all of Africa's energy needs, but it will continue to grow in importance as part of our continent's energy mix. What is important is that we continue to work together through this new institution and beyond to put our collective resources and knowledge at the disposal of our planet's future. Once again, President Macron and Prime Minister Modi, thank you for the leadership you have provided and will continue to provide in this very important matter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency, for your invaluable remarks. May we now request His Excellency, Mr. Ali Bongo Undimba, President of the Gabonese Republic and Coordinator of the African Committee of Heads of State on Climate Change to kindly address the plenary. Prime Minister Modi, Monsieur le Président de la République Française, Your Excellencies, fellow heads of states, ladies and gentlemen, heads of government, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the initiative that brings us together today has two principal objectives, to further the development of, the, uh, of solar energy and to make it globally available. Giving the unique importance of the initiative, I would like to congratulate India and France for their leadership on this issue, which is crucial for the future of the planet we all share. I would also like to extend warm thanks to Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Indian people for their wonderful hospitality. Solar energy is a key part of the solution if we are to achieve our commitment to stay below two degrees, and solar energy is a key catalyst for our planet's energy transition. During the One Planet Summit held in Paris, I urge the international community to commit to action to change the paradigm by renouncing the economic model that has brought us where, to where we are today. And if we are to be successful, it is critical that we decarbonize our economies by investing in renewables such as solar energy. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, access to solar energy is a priority for Africa, where 15% of the world's population consume just 3% of global energy production. Considering population growth on the continent, without a concerted effort, fewer than 50% of Africans will have access to electricity by 2050. As a consequence, African nations committed to join the International Solar, Solar Alliance at COP21. Our ambition is to increase availability and to reduce the cost of solar energy in order to see it as widely distributed as possible. As the core coordinator of the uh, African Heads of States and Government Committee on Climate Change, I am here to reiterate our commitment to express our expectation that we can consolidate this initiative whose advantages must be sustainable and shared. Sustainable because the solar energy we want must be simple to maintain, 
for the users, shared because its development must benefit both the populations without energy as well as the developers of solar solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, I have committed my country, Gabon, to a strategy of industrialization and the local processing of natural resources. This will result in increased energy demands and that energy must be clean energy. In consequences and considering the, the great potential for hydro energy in Gabon, our objective is around 60% hydro energy by 2020. Nevertheless, in line with our conservation policies and our commitment to reduce CO2 emissions by 50%, solar energy is still appropriate in many circumstances in Gabon. We have already equipped over 100, over 100 of villages with solar kits, and in the same spirit, I have committed to, to installing 5,000 solar lamps across Gabon in the first quarter of 2018. We have plans to install solar kits on the roof of 450 villages, where this represents the optimal source of energy, as well as solar pumps to promote agriculture in 50 community centers. And we have a plan to light up 50,000 homes all across Gabon with solar energy. It is because we believe in clean energy that Gabon is a founder member of the International Solar Alliance and that we have proposed five innovative projects. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear. By supplying our people with solar energy, we contribute to saving the planet by reducing our gr greenhouse gas emissions. That said, as a French statesman once said, on ne peut pas demander au pays en développement d'être solidaire de la survie de notre planète sans que les peuples qui y vivent aient eux-mêmes des perspectives de vie décente. You cannot ask developing countries to commit to saving the planet unless they have the perspective of a decent quality of life. On that note, I renew my call that we respect our commitments to work together effectively. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency, for your insightful remarks. May we now request His Excellency, Mr. Fawar Esso Jimna Gansingbe, President of Republic of Togo, to kindly address the plenary. Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Monsieur le Président de la République Française, Monsieur, Mesdames et Messieurs les chefs d'État de gouvernement, Mesdames et Messieurs les chefs de délégation, Mesdames et Messieurs les ministres, chers invités, pour aborder les grandes questions dont dépend de notre existence commune, l'humanité n'est jamais aussi grande que lorsqu'elle parle d'une seule voix. Monsieur le Premier ministre Narendra Modi, je vous remercie de nous en donner l'occasion en co-organisant ce sommet avec le président Macron. Avec les fondements de l'Alliance solaire internationale, nous inscrivons dans un socle intangible les valeurs du vivre ensemble, de responsabilité et de solidarité. L'histoire retiendra que New Delhi fut le berceau de ce renouveau qui va porter le soleil par toute la terre. À vos côtés, je voudrais saluer l'engagement du président Macron qui n'a eu de cesse d'en appeler à la prise de conscience et à la responsabilité de tous au sujet de la justice climatique et de la préservation de notre planète. L'Alliance solaire internationale est une chance pour le monde entier et plus encore pour les régions situées entre les tropiques comme l'Afrique de l'Ouest au sein de laquelle nous sommes des champions de l'ensoleillement. Il est donc naturel 
que nous entendions être également des acteurs engagés de cette alliance, ceci d'autant plus que l'évolution contrastée du développement mondial ne nous a pas permis jusqu'ici de tirer tous les profits de notre exposition quasi permanente au rayonnement solaire. Nos États sont résolus à engager une transition énergétique fondée sur cette richesse disponible, respectueuse de l'environnement et qui offre de si grandes perspectives. Ces progrès sont tributaires d'une démarche solidaire et responsable. Pour cela, nous devons concrètement avancer ensemble et mettre en œuvre des solutions qui contribuent au mieux-être des populations contemporaines tout en préservant la planète pour les générations à venir. L'Afrique de l'Ouest ambitionne de porter progressivement la part des énergies renouvelables dans le mix énergétique à 48 d'ici 2030. Ce faisant, nous ferons de notre région un corridor des énergies renouvelables pour l'accès universel à l'électricité. Pour parvenir à l'accès universel à l'électricité, le Togo, mon pays, déploie, plus, déploie plusieurs actions ciblées en direction des localités les moins bien desservies, essentiellement en zone rurale. Mais il y a encore fort à faire dans ce domaine pour étendre de façon significative la desserte, ouvrir d'autres horizons et apporter à nos populations le bénéfice des nombreuses applications qui peuvent se développer autour du capital solaire. Nous y parviendrons, car nous ne sommes pas seuls, nous ne sommes plus seuls. Nous pouvons compter sur la force de l'alliance que nous fondons aujourd'hui pour apporter la lumière du développement aux populations les plus démunies. L'apport du secteur privé sera déterminant. Le développement de la technologie basée sur l'énergie solaire requiert d'importants moyens. Les engagements que nous prenons aujourd'hui sont déclinés en projets. J'invite les entrepreneurs privés à miser sur l'avenir en y investissant. Au Togo, nous avons lancé une initiative d'électrification par kit solaire individuel à prix préférentiel. La phase pilote vise 20 000 ménages dès cette année et 300 000 ménages d'ici 2022. Les premiers foyers connectés parlent avec enthousiasme de réels changements dans leur quotidien du jour au lendemain. Nous mettons aussi l'accent sur l'installation de mini-centrales photovoltaïques. J'en ai inauguré une il y a quelques jours et l'engouement des populations nous confirme que nous sommes sur la bonne voie. C'est grâce à l'énergie du soleil que s'allument ces étoiles de joie et d'espoir dans les yeux de milliers d'Africains, de milliers d'Africains, de Sud-Américains, d'Asiatiques, d'Indiens et dans le monde entier. Nous avons le devoir de maintenir cette flamme allumée. Nous avons la responsabilité de tout mettre en œuvre pour que l'Alliance solaire internationale grandisse, se, con se consolide et prospère. Je voudrais pour finir dire ma conviction qu'avec la mobilisation des pouvoirs publics, l'accompagnement des partenaires techniques et financiers et l'appui des acteurs privés, nous donnerons à notre alliance les moyens de porter les rayons du développement aux confins de la terre. Le soleil est notre bien commun. Ensemble, nous sommes capables d'en faire une richesse universelle. Je n'ai pas de doute que nous y parviendrons. Je vous remercie. Thank you, Excellency, for your invaluable remarks. May we now request Ms. Patricia Espinoza, Executive Secretary, UNFCC, to kindly deliver her address. Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Honorable President Emmanuel Macron, Honorable Heads of State and Government, Excellencies, 
distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It is a privilege for me to be able to join you at this remarkable gathering representing the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres. On the first day of this year, he, the Secretary General, issued a red alert for the world. He called for unity in the face of incredible challenges, including the challenge of climate change. Today, you all have come together under the banner of the International Solar Alliance to confront the challenge of climate change head on. You are also here taking action that increases energy access for millions of people, that builds resilient communities, and that provides solid basis for a transition towards a low emissions 21st century economy. Indeed, our globally agreed goals in the Paris Agreement and the Agenda for Sustainable Development cannot be achieved without your effort to scale up solar power generation and support countries with great solar potential. This is precisely what is needed to achieve those goals. It is particularly relevant because growth in future energy consumption as well as emissions are expected to be mainly coming from non-OECD countries. Therefore, the leadership shown by countries in this alliance is critical for development throughout the world. The International Solar Alliance is a powerful evidence of what is possible when countries come together and collaborate towards a common goal. This is crucial at this critical moment when we know what needs to be done, but so many barriers to action remain. So thank you for breaking down those barriers and stepping up ambition through action. Unity makes us strong. Let's work together to empower all nations to take climate action. This is our moment to deliver on the promise of a better future agreed in Paris. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, esteemed dignitary. May we now request His Excellency, Mr. Isaufo Mahamadao, President of Republic of Niger, to kindly address the plenary. Monsieur Naranda Modi, Premier ministre de l'Inde, Excellence Monsieur Emmanuel Macron, Président de la République française, Excellence Monsieur le chef d'État et de gouvernement, Mesdames et Messieurs, je tiens à renouveler mes félicitations au Premier ministre Naranda Modi et au président Emmanuel Macron, co-président de ce sommet et promoteur infatigable de l'Alliance solaire internationale pour l'impulsion concluante qu'ils ont su donner à cet ambitieux projet. Ce premier sommet de l'Alliance solaire internationale est l'aboutissement d'un processus auquel le Niger a largement contribué depuis la signature de l'accord cadre en marge de la COP22 de Marrakech en novembre 2016. Conscient de l'importance de cet accord, le Niger fut l'un des premiers pays à le ratifier, ce qui lui vaut aujourd'hui d'être parmi les membres fondateurs. Mesdames et Messieurs, l'Alliance solaire internationale fait partie des réponses les plus pertinentes aux défis qui se posent à la communauté internationale. Promouvoir le développement économique et social de façon durable. 
la zone cible de l'Alliance et la zone intertropicale, représentant 73% de la population mondiale. Cette zone présente la particularité d'être la plus exposée aux effets du réchauffement climatique du fait d'un ensoleillement élevé et elle comprend la majorité des pays les plus pauvres du monde pour lesquels l'atteinte des objectifs de développement durable en 2030 constitue un sérieux défi. L'Alliance solaire internationale se propose de transformer ce handicap que constitue l'extrême ensoleillement en une opportunité de nature à booster le développement économique et social de ces pays. C'est désormais une évidence. Aucun développement n'est possible sans la garantie d'un accès adéquat à l'énergie. L'énergie en quantité suffisante est consubstantielle au développement et à la prospérité mondiale. En effet, grâce à l'énergie, les populations des pays cibles pourront accroître leur production agricole, développer des industries et des services et de manière générale améliorer leur cadre de vie. Par ailleurs, l'énergie solaire contribuera à l'atteinte des objectifs de réduction des émissions de gaz à effet de serre et donc de sauvegarde de l'environnement, en particulier sa diffusion dans le milieu rural où elle va se substituer au bois de chauffe, permettra également de lutter efficacement contre la désertification. En effet, dans des pays comme le Niger, les besoins énergétiques pour la cuisson restent encore quasi exclusivement satisfaits par le bois énergie, ce qui accélère la désertification. Le Niger s'est très tôt investi dans le domaine de l'énergie solaire à travers les recherches conduites par un de ses éminents fils. En effet, dès 1969, notre pays s'est doté d'un office national de l'énergie solaire, devenu aujourd'hui centre national d'énergie solaire. Le Nord-Sol, sous la direction du professeur Abdou Moumouni Diofo, physicien émérite, a produit et vulgarisé des chauffe eau solaire et des distillateurs. Il a développé et expérimenté des pompes solaires pour l'hydraulique villageoise et l'irrigation. C'est ainsi que des brevets d'invention d'un moteur thermique solaire et d'un générateur solaire à vapeur, conçus et développés par le professeur Moumouni, ont été déposés auprès de l'Organisation africaine de la propriété intellectuelle. Éclairé le Niger par les rayons solaires, tel était, il y a déjà plus de 50 ans, l'ambition du professeur Moumouni. Le Niger est donc un pionnier dans ce domaine. De nos jours, l'effort se poursuit et le programme de renaissance du Niger a prévu la promotion de l'énergie solaire comme axe majeur de la politique énergétique du pays. Aussi, notre ambition pour les cinq ans à venir, traduite dans le plan de développement économique et social 2017-2021, est-elle l'utilisation accrue de l'énergie solaire à travers sa mise en valeur dans l'électrification rurale décentralisée. Cela permettra d'améliorer le taux d'accès à l'électricité du pays, qui n'est seulement que de 12 actuellement. De plus, ce taux d'accès cache une disparité énorme, car il est à peine de 1 pour les populations rurales et de plus de 50 pour les populations urbaines. Le Niger est désireux de développer un partenariat conséquent dans le domaine des énergies renouvelables et en particulier de l'énergie solaire, aussi bien dans le contexte de l'Alliance que sur le plan bilatéral. Nous saluons le financement des projets au Niger par Exim Bank Chine, par Exim Bank Inde, ainsi que par l'Union européenne et la France. Nous déplorons ici les conditionnalités du FMI qui nous limite l'accès à des sources de financement 
y compris concessionnelle. S'agissant de l'Alliance solaire internationale, ces programmes sont à même de permettre la réalisation de nombreux objectifs autour desquels nous sommes aujourd'hui mobilisés. L'engagement pris de faciliter les financements pour développer des capacités de production d'électricité dans tous les pays à fort potentiel solaire et la volonté de mobiliser d'ici 2030 1 000 milliards de dollars d'investissement pour le solaire sont à saluer. La possibilité de réduire les coûts des projets de production d'énergie solaire à travers des financements abordables, le développement des mécanismes de crédit commun que prévoit l'accord constitue des mesures novatrices de nature à faciliter la mise en œuvre des grands projets solaires. En effet, le classement actuel des coûts de l'énergie suivant les sources place le solaire et le charbon juste après le pétrole et loin derrière l'hydraulique et le nucléaire. Il y a donc encore des progrès à faire pour une réduction des coûts de l'énergie solaire afin de la rendre plus compétitive que le charbon et de la mettre en compétition avec le nucléaire et l'hydraulique. Cela semble possible au vu des perspectives offertes par l'Alliance solaire internationale. Notre ambition au Niger est de transformer le monde rural. Cette transformation est impossible sans accès à l'électricité. C'est en éclairant les villages que nous créerons des milieux d'emploi pour des jeunes qui n'ont pour l'instant comme seule alternative que la voie périlleuse et mortelle de la migration. C'est pourquoi le Niger est parti avec 21 autres pays au programme du solaire pour l'agriculture qui vise la décentralisation des applications vers les zones rurales à travers des systèmes d'irrigation, le conditionnement des productions et le développement des normes communes. Grâce à l'initiative 3N, les Nigériens nourrissent les Nigériens, notre pays s'est engagé sur la voie de la modernisation de son agriculture en renforçant notamment le volet irrigation et compte profiter largement des applications solaires dans ce domaine. L'alliance de l'eau et du soleil, telle est la clé de la modernisation du monde rural. De même, des programmes comme ceux relatifs à la mise à l'échelle des mini-réseaux solaires ou ceux relatifs aux toits solaires constituent une opportunité que le Niger ne manquera pas de saisir dans le cadre de l'Alliance. Les nouvelles technologies de l'information constituent pour le Niger une autre opportunité de développement des applications de l'énergie solaire par le biais du programme Village Intelligent mis en œuvre par l'Agence nationale de la Société de l'Information, y compris la mise en place de réseaux électriques intelligents. Enfin, Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, je voudrais, avant de terminer mon propos, réaffirmer le soutien et l'adhésion du Niger à cette importante initiative. Le Niger est convaincu que l'Alliance solaire internationale constitue un véritable instrument de solidarité agissante entre les pays riches et les pays à fort potentiel solaire. C'est un devoir moral d'assurer à travers l'Alliance l'accès universel à cette énergie si indispensable à la lutte contre la pauvreté et à l'amélioration des conditions de vie des populations de la zone intertropicale. Je vous remercie de votre attention. Thank you, Excellency, for your insightful remarks. May we now request His Excellency, Mr. Mohammed Abdul Hamid, President of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, to kindly address the plenary. His Excellency Mr. Emmanuel Macron, Honorable President Falls, His Excellency Narendra Modi, Honorable Prime Minister of India, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. At the outset, 
I would like to thank the government of India and the government of France for inviting me to this important summit. I also express my thanks and gratitude to the Indian government for extending one hospitality to me and my delegation. Ladies and gentlemen, the global warming and its subsequent efforts on many countries are a reality now. Bangladesh, uh, Bangladesh is one of the worst sufferers. Although our share in emitting greenhouse gas is 0.1, threats to Bangladesh are abundant. This includes sea level rise, droughts, floods, and cyclones. Bangladesh is nevertheless putting its best effort to make a fair contribution in fighting these challenges. We are also taking steps to reduce future emissions. We strongly believe that the development of renewable energy is desirable for the developing countries. It is not only that investing in renewable energy is an international trend, but it is from the point of improving energy access for rural and hard to reach people. It is also indispensable for the safety of, safety of our planet. Dear friends, clean energy is critical for overall development, which is recognized in SDG 7, ensuring access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for everyone accordingly. The developing countries are seeking to rapidly scale up renewable energy use. This shift to renewable energy is driven by a number of considerations. First, many developing countries are struggling to meet fast-growing energy demand. Second, the technology cost of renewable energy has also been decreasing steadily. As a result, the global share of renewable energy in the total energy mix has increased slowly. We believe that meeting the target of renewable energy and energy efficiency requires well-coordinated and whole, bold policy commitment and high level of financing. The world community has an obligation to play a significant role in this arena. In this regard, we deeply appreciate the leadership of India and France for establishing the International Solar Alliance. Excellencies, the government of Bangladesh has undertaken a number of programs to enhance the use of renewable energy. As part of ongoing activities, Bangladesh has installed around 5 million solar home systems serving around 20 million people. The government has also initiated a program to generate 500 megawatt of solar-based electricity for the national grid. And has use of solar power-based improved coke stop in rural areas has significantly reduced emission with increased energy efficiency. We see similar potential in solar-powered irrigation pumps. Our renewable energy policy also dictates that 10% of our total electricity requires to be generated from renewable sources by 2021. Excellencies, Bangladesh has always joined hands in any novel global initiative. In this spirit, we did not hesitate to sign and ratify the framework of framework agreement of International Solar Alliance to become a founding member. This reaffirms our firm commitment towards further promoting renewable energy, more particularly solar energy. We hope that the ISA will widen the opportunities for its all members' countries to collaborate with each other in all areas of solar energy, from its use to research and development, from technology transfer to capacity building. For this, adequate funding sources are crucial. I am aware of ISS partnership with global financial institutions and mechanism to create funds to reduce financial cost of solar projects. I am happy to note that India and France are providing funds to member states for setting up projects on solar energy. 
I also, I would also like to inform that we were able to share our experiences of solar home system to professionals from nine African countries. Dear friends, we are always ready to mutually collaborate and cooperate for ensuring affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Our priorities are often undermined, underpinned by developmental goals of our individual countries. Nevertheless, we should not forget to conserve environment for the benefit of our future generation. To this endeavor, we look forward to the unlocking of a new dynamic in renewable energy with support from the solidarity among the member countries of ISF. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency, for your invaluable remarks. May we now request His Excellency, Mr. Baron Vanga, President of Nauru, to kindly address the plenary. His Excellency, Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister of India, His Excellency, Emmanuel Macron, President of France, Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Namaste, Bonjour, and Kamuwiramu. Allow me to express my sincerest gratitude on behalf of my government and the people of Nauru to the government of India for your kind invitation and warm welcome and generous hospitality since I arrived in your beautiful and culturally rich country. We also thank you, Your Excellency Emmanuel Macron, President of France, for your kind invitation to participate in the International Solar Alliance Founding Conference and Solar Summit. I would like to personally take this opportunity to commend, to commend the joint efforts of the Government of India and France in establishing the International Solar Alliance and congratulate you on your achievements in bringing clean, affordable and renewable energy for all. Today, 80% of the world's energy comes from fossil fuel, causing increases in greenhouse gas emissions and the impact of climate change on our vulnerable ecosystems. An ecosystem that our societies, economies, and our very own survival hinges on. Nauru is susceptible to climate change and is filling the brunt of sea level rise and erratic periods of drought. While our overall impact on reducing greenhouse gas emissions is insignificant, we accept our joint moral responsibility to do our part to save our planet. I am pleased to announce that Nauru recently reviewed, updated, and endorsed its energy roadmap for 2018 2020. The purpose of the update is to reconfirm our national commitments to improving the system sustainability of energy use through renewable energy sources and energy efficiency initiatives. The target set out in our energy roadmap and energy policy framework are aligned with our national sustainable development strategy. They all aspire to achieve a set target of meeting 50% of the electricity demand from renewable sources by 2020. My government and the people of Nauru are determined to do all we can 
with the assistance of our friends to achieve this target. Nauru's annual energy demand is around 35 gigawatt hours, and this is expected to rise to 46 gigawatt hours in 2020. Nauru's dependence on diesel fossil fuel for power generation makes us vulnerable to rising diesel fuel prices and thus not a sustainable option for the long-term development of our nation. Nauru is limited in the renewable, renewable sources available for generating energy. However, we have been blessed with abundance of sunlight, making solar power the viable alternative renewable energy for Nauru. At present, renewable, renewable sources comprising 700 kilowatt of solar panel installations generate 3.2% of the energy demand. All current solar panels inst installations are mounted on government buildings on island, and we recognize the need to establish the mechanism required to encourage domestic households to use solar technology. Nauru signed the framework agreement of the International Solar Alliance in November 2016, and it did not take us long to ratify the agreement in May 2017, because we saw the value and potential it could have on our solar-rich country. And we, too, recognize that sustainable development, universal energy access, and energy security are fundamental to the future of our planet and countries, acknowledging the need for clean and affordable renewable energy. Therefore, I appeal to members of the International Solar Alliance to commit to working together and assist each other in sharing your know-how, your best practices and technologies, and in particular, redesigning your solar technologies to be user-friendly to all, whatever their social and economic situations may be. I particularly appreciate the Government of India for the Solar Mama International Training Program supported by the Indian Technical and Economic Corporation and Barefoot College, providing training in solar electric electrification to illiterate and semi-illiterate grandmothers to play a major role in community development and bringing sustainable electricity to remote, inaccessible villages. Grandmothers from Nauru also have the opportunity to train under this scheme. My government will continue to work with our partners to achieve, to increase investments in solar energy in all sectors, including domestic households, in order to meet our target of 50% of grid electricity supplies from renewable energy sources by 2020, and to divert our energy mix away from reliance on fossil fuel. In closing, I would like to once again convey my sincerest thanks to ISA for providing us with a common platform for cooperation and for your continued effort in reducing the cost of finance and technology for the immediate ramp up and development, deployment of solar technologies to countries. Thank you. Sukriya. Merci. Tabaka. Thank you, Excellency, for your invaluable remarks. We shall now view a video message from Ms. Rachel Kite, Chief Executive Officer of Sustainable Energy for All and Special Representative of the UN Secretary General for Sustainable Energy for All. Hello, my name is Rachel Kite and I'm the Special Representative 
of the United Nations Secretary General for Sustainable Energy for All and the CEO of SE for All. One of the most exciting moments in December 2015 was the initiative led by the Indian government to bring solar energy at scale to all parts of the world, to build a belt of solar around the world, joined with the government of France. It is the vision of India and France together that will make this a reality. I'm sorry that I can't be in India today, but my heart goes out to the leadership that's being shown at this particularly important milestone for the International Solar Alliance. ISA has the right scale of ambition for this moment in the energy transition, an energy transition which will make the world more inclusive, fairer, cleaner and better for all. Thank you for your leadership and we look forward to working with you to make this a reality. May we now request His Excellency, Mr. Ibrahim Bubakar Kita, President of the Republic of Mali, to kindly address the plenary. Monsieur le Président de la République Française, Monsieur le Premier ministre de l'Inde, Mesdames, Messieurs les chefs d'État et de gouvernement, honorables invités, Mesdames, Messieurs, il est loisible de, de comprendre que mes premiers mots soient de remerciement à l'endroit de nos hôtes, la France et l'Inde, de nous avoir conviés ici aujourd'hui. à ce lancement de l'Alliance solaire internationale, qui ne saurait être un événement de plus, mais un événement ainsi. Notre premier contact avec l'énergie solaire fut un peu spécial très très jeune, je suis un jeune lycéen, quand nous avons eu la chance de visiter le four solaire de Montlui en Bigorre. Par la suite, nous avons été vraiment intéressés par la passion d'un homme, d'un homme tout dévoué à sa science au point qu'il venait dans les lycées essayer d'intéresser les jeunes lycéens que nous étions. Il a été célébré déjà ici ce matin par son compatriote, le président Mahamadou Issoufou. Je vais parler du professeur Abdou Moumouni Djoufou. Cet homme avait la passion de sa science solaire. Il a créé le centre de recherche d'énergie solaire à Bamako, qui fut un foyer qui a produit tous nos grands ingénieurs dans cette science-là. Et c'est normal, venant d'un pays ensoleillé, s'il en fut. Et aujourd'hui, l'on pourrait trouver curieux que le président du Mali ait souci autre que de venir jusqu'en Inde participer à un forum mondial, une cérémonie de lancement de l'Alliance solaire, confronté au problème dont le président Macron a parlé hier soir, récurrent, prégnant, de terrorisme qui est son quotidien dans son pays et dans sa sève, dans sa région, le Sahel. Mais les choses sont liées. Chers amis, les terroristes n'aiment pas la lumière. Et hélas, la plupart de nos villages vivent dans l'obscurité. Et chaque fois que nous avons pu, aujourd'hui, grâce à cet instrument merveilleux 
qu'est le solaire, sortir un village de l'obscurité, ses chances de survie et de défense ont été accrues. Également, nous avons vu que grâce à l'énergie solaire, des, petites, des toutes petites entreprises vont se mettre en place, qui à leur niveau, à leur échelle, participent à notre souci de retenir les jeunes sur place. Au lieu que d'aller à l'aventure, dans le désert où souvent c'est la mort qui les attend, ou pire, d'affronter l'océan ou, la, ou la, la Méditerranée et d'y finir au fond noyé. C'est donc que ce sujet-là est d'importance insigne pour mon pays. Pourquoi je suis ici parmi vous aujourd'hui Cette rencontre est également pour moi l'expression de la vitalité de la coopération internationale entre les États d'Afrique, d'Europe, d'Amérique latine, d'Amérique, d'Asie et d'Océanie, réunis dans le cadre des partenariats pour le développement durable. Le Mali, prenant la mesure de cette importante initiative, a signé dès le 15 novembre 2016 l'accord cadre portant création de l'Alliance solaire internationale, ce qui fait de notre pays l'un des premiers à avoir compris la nécessité d'une solidarité internationale autour des questions liées au changement climatique et aux solutions solaires. Le lancement de l'Alliance solaire internationale, auquel nous avons le bonheur et le privilège de prendre part aujourd'hui, est d'une importance capitale pour le Mali, mais également pour chacun des pays membres de cette heureuse initiative, car elle va apporter une réponse collective aux défis communs liés à un déploiement massif des ressources d'énergie solaire pour la conservation, pour la couverture de nos besoins, et ils sont nombreux. Le Mali dispose pour sa part d'importantes potentialités en matière de sources d'énergie renouvelables, en dépit d'un taux de l'électrification de 38% seulement au niveau national, dont 22-30% en milieu rural, en moyenne en 2016, néanmoins, néanmoins, en 2030, nous ambitionnons de porter la contribution des énergies renouvelables de moins de 5% aujourd'hui environ à 38% dans le mix énergétique national. L'accès des populations aux énergies nouvelles, modernes, durables, reste marginal et constitue l'un des principaux défis que nous devons relever si nous voulons véritablement indiquer la pauvreté dans nos États membres et nous le voulons. Aussi, le développement de nombreuses solutions innovantes issues des énergies renouvelables au sein de nos politiques et stratégies permet de maintenir un cadre de vie durable et d'accélérer particulièrement l'accès à l'énergie pour tous et le soutien à un développement économique et social durable. L'impact important et transversal du développement du secteur de l'énergie, la multiplicité des acteurs internes et externes, ainsi que les nombreuses initiatives de soutien, rendent critiques aujourd'hui les besoins de coordination et d'harmonisation des actions menées par les États et toutes les institutions internationales partenaires. La mise en œuvre avec plus d'efficience et d'impact des visions stratégiques pertinentes que nous avons réussi à dessiner avec clairvoyance et engagement nous impose alors de porter une attention particulière sur le renforcement de la coordination entre les différents acteurs. C'est pourquoi, tout en saluant l'heureuse initiative de la création de l'Alliance internationale, je voudrais ici dire la détermination de mon pays dans le cadre de cette organisation à relever le défi de la transformation de nos ressources solaires abondantes en des multiples opportunités qui vont permettre le développement des services énergétiques et des solutions innovantes 
dans les domaines de l'agriculture, de la santé, de l'éducation et de l'industrie. La promotion des investissements à moindre coût dans le secteur de l'énergie, le renforcement des capacités en vue de faciliter et d'accélérer l'opérationnalisation de nos stratégies. Mesdames, Messieurs, je souhaite par conséquent que l'Alliance s'attaque résolument à relever les défis spécifiques majeurs que sont l'accès simplifié et direct de nos pays au financement des projets ainsi qu'à la réduction des coûts des transactions associées et la levée des barrières légales, réglementaires et institutionnelles empêchant le déploiement massif des investissements et des solutions innovantes de financement. En terminant, permettez de retirer mes sincères remerciements à l'Inde et à la France ainsi qu'à l'ensemble des pays membres et souhaiter plein succès au lancement de l'Alliance solaire internationale. Vive la coopération internationale en matière d'énergie. Vive la solidarité entre les peuples. Je vous remercie. Thank you, Excellency, for your invaluable remarks. May we now request His Excellency, Sir Peter Coastgrove, Governor General of the Commonwealth of Australia, to kindly address the plenary. Your Excellency, the Honourable Narendra Modi, Your Excellency, the Honourable Emmanuel Macron, Heads of State, Heads of Government, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Australian Government, I'd like to congratulate India and France on their concerted efforts in the establishment of the International Solar Alliance. Prime Minister Modi, at the World Economic Forum this year, you listed climate change as one of the biggest threats for mankind. You asked this question. How many countries and people are there who want to help the developing countries and societies in providing the appropriate technology and necessary resources. Well, I can tell you that Australia is proud to answer that call, and we look forward to working closely with ISA members and partners to meet the challenge you have set. Australia boasts a well-developed solar industry with advanced skills and technology and know-how in utility-scale projects, rooftop solar and storage, as well as innovative systems for remote and island communities. Earlier this week, I visited a solar farm near our national capital, Canberra, which is providing thousands of homes with electricity as part of that city's push to draw all its energy from renewables. We also have world-leading research into new technological solutions, which will play a vital role in addressing our climate and social challenges, including transportable, flexible, printed solar sheeting for disaster relief, concentrating solar for industrial heat or steam, and solar cooling to displace air conditioners. In order to share our expertise to support capacity building, the Australian Government is contributing around three quarters of a million dollars to the Clean Energy Solutions Centre, an online platform where policy makers in ISA member countries will have free access to tailored expert advice on policy making and finance, webinars and training, and a library of tools and resources for policy development. Furthermore, under the ISA's Solar Technology Application Resource Centre initiative, Australia is leading the development of a solar training program for policy makers. We're also establishing a solar centre of excellence, which will be a portal 
to our extensive world-class research, innovation and training capabilities in the solar sector, and which will facilitate networking and knowledge sharing with similar centres across the ISA. Our University of Queensland is partnering with the Indian Institute of Technology in Mumbai to lead a holistic study of the true return on investments into energy access for remote and rural communities, including eliminating poverty and improving socio-economic conditions. President Macron, we would not be here today without the support of France to get us this far and creating the momentum for future activities. We thank France for its ongoing leadership role in keeping the global spotlight on climate action. We also echo your call to industry and financial institutions to also take responsibility and become agents of change. Prime Minister Modi, we are once again witnessing the power of your personal commitment and leadership at this historic event where your vision for unlocking the potential of solar energy is coming to fruition. It is reassuring and inspiring to see so many countries uniting under the ISA to create a better world. The ISA has been described as India's gift to the world for combating climate change. And what a gift it is, promising affordable and reliable access to energy, which enables better education, health, gender equity, employment, economic opportunities, and sustainable development for all. Australia is proud to assist you in delivering that gift, particularly to the most deserving of recipients, those communities with little or no energy access. I would also like to thank the leaders and representatives of all countries gathered here today for uniting together in this historical opportunity to change the world in one generation. This is an enormous responsibility. I have confidence we'll be able to deliver for all those depending on us. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency, for your insightful remarks. May we now request His Excellency, Mr. Maitripala Sirisena, President of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka to kindly address the plenary. His Excellency Narendra Modi, Prime Minister of India, his Excellency Emmanuel Macron, President of France, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to participate in this summit, the founding conference of the International Solar Alliance. The presence of such a large number of government heads and government representatives is a significance of its importance. I thank President Macron and Prime Minister Modi for the invitation and for their leadership to make this initiative a success. The energy crisis is a major problem faced by the people in Sri Lanka as well as by the people living in several developed and developing countries in the world. The world's population growth has caused an increase in the energy demand. Solar energy can 
alleviate this problem. In Sri Lanka, we have already commenced a program called Surya Bala Sangramya, that is a battle of solar power. Through this project, we expect to generate 1,000 megawatts of electricity by 2025. We are also in the process of developing 1 megawatt to 10 megawatts capacity solar power system to assist small and medium level industries. I am very grateful to ISA and Prime Minister Modi for extended support for this major solar project in Sri Lanka under this program. This will benefit several homes, schools, hospitals, infrastructure, and government facilities in my country. I am confident that the deliberations that we have set out today will navigate our joint effort towards practical cooperation and that the rest of the global community will join forces with the Alliance. In conclusion, let me assure Sri Lanka's a strong commitment to support this Alliance, and I am confident that this meeting will showcase the power of the countries in this Alliance to bring about solutions to create a greener, cleaner, and healthy environment for people of this world. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency, for your invaluable remarks. May we now request Mr. K. V. Kamath, President, BRICS New Development Bank, to kindly deliver his address. Your Excellency, the Prime Minister of the Republic of India, Narendra Modi, Your Excellency, President of the French Republic, Mr. Emmanuel Macron, Excellencies, distinguished guests. It is indeed a pleasure to be here at this formal inauguration of the International Solar Alliance. It is a tribute to a vision that took shape two and a half years ago in Paris that the ISA has now been transformed into an international treaty-based organization of countries in the tropics. On behalf of the New Development Bank, I convey my best wishes to ISA and wish it all success in the future. We have issued a joint declaration with ISA yesterday, expressing our intention to explore avenues to work together. NDB looks forward to partnering with ISA in its efforts to address energy needs and energy security issues of its member countries through massive deployment of solar energy at affordable cost. The importance of renewable energy in general, and solar energy in particular, to the future of a low-carbon world cannot be overstated. For many countries represented in this room, the adverse impacts of climate change are already a reality. If we are to live a livable world for future generations, it is our responsibility to take immediate action to shift from an unsustainable, high-carbon, fossil fuel-intensive development path to a sustainable, low-carbon, renewable energy-intensive development path. The ISA is a major step in this direction with its focus on scaling up solar energy applications. NDP's operations also emphasize renewable energy. At the launch of the NDP in Mufa in Russia in July of 2015, the Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, asked the NDP to focus on renewable energy and sustainable, and sustainable developments in its operations. In our first year, almost all the projects that we did were in the field of uh, renewable energy. Our strategy for the next five years calls for at least two-thirds of our lending to be in sustainable infrastructure, and therefore, we expect that we will continue to support renewable energy and solar energy operations wherever opportun as the opportunities arise. 
NDB is well aware that solar energy is now a mainstream energy force, competitive, sustainable, and green. We stand ready to work with our member countries and the ISA and other development partners to support the scaling up of solar energy through appropriate interventions in knowledge and finance. I wish the ISA great success. Thank you. Thank you, esteemed dignitary. May we now request His Excellency, Brigadier David Arthur Granger, President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, to kindly address the plenary. Your Excellency, Mr. Narendra Modi, Prime Minister of the Republic of India, Your Excellency Emmanuel Macron, President of the French Republic, fellow heads of state and government, high government officials, special invitees, delegates. The delegation of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana expresses its appreciation to the government of the Republic of India for the warm welcome and excellent arrangements put in place for its participation in this summit. Guyana applauds the Republic of India and the French Republic for taking this important international initiative and for co-hosting this event. Excellencies, the International Solar Alliance 